Well, I bit the bullet. I drunk it dry. My heart is spilling over the sides of a tall glass of whiskey. That's killing the pain. My wings were broken, all feathers and flame. Hot pump and black and blue, swirling down the pit. I ain't been me since Zephyr came and went. Listen up, uh, listeners. It's DJ Smack Talk with an important Mahler's update. Not even gonna waste any time, let's just get right to it. Skyfall took off for a flight test, the whole darn city. But once they broke the cloud cover, apparently they got attacked by another Enclave ship that was trying to take it back. Yeah, apparently some of those uh, Pegasi think it would be a good thing to take it back and then take back the SPP that some stable tech repair ponies stole from them. It's a whole mess. Uh, but the Maulers managed to repel them and <clears throat> change their management. So, uh, and they decided that the Enclave probably has more important things to worry about than a broken down experiment down here in the Badlands. So now we're just waiting for the two ships to kind of settle their differences. And yeah, meanwhile, the four horses are defending the desert north of Ribcage with everything they've got. And even the Steel Rangers are kind of figuring out how and if they should join up. Ugh, so let's face it, Colts and Phillies, we're in, in the middle of a war now. The question now is when all the combatants are going to get on the field already. Hopefully soon. Stay safe, and here's some more music to calm your nerves. And that sounded like a definite hint, hint, nudge, nudge there. <laughs> Smack Talk might be hinting, hinting, nudging, nudging a few uh, people who are listening, probably. Also, last time... Good Medicaid. <laughs> also, last time Zenkarn got addicted to something. No, I got addicted to nothing. <laughs> no good. <laughs> he might he might have a, a rage addiction now. Because that is a totally a thing we have... To- a totally a thing we wanted to deal with. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't have to deal with it. Only Din has to deal with it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as he gets his rage, damn it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so we might have to keep track of how many Tibbs has on him. <laughs> Zebra rage. Who knows that uh, Zenkarn's addicted? Uh, so far, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, him and Flotsam, basically, right now. Does Flotsam know that I'm actually addicted? Uh, actually, I don't know if she necessarily saw you take it, but she does know that you were... She she could probably guess that you were addled. Does does Zenkarn definitively if, know that and, and yes, if, this is an addiction? If, if nothing else, you were definitely uh, affected by the emotion rage for a while. But anyway, uh, that was then. Now... Uh, what's happening right now is basically uh, sort of a mutual exchange happening across the sky between the two ships. Um, you know, Skyfall's making sure that the hostages from the Enclave are returned. Um, any most of the, you know, any, any casualties that happened are being dealt with, um, and the Enclave's trying to uphold its end of the bargain by retreating by returning all of its soldiers. Uh, and also the uh, terms that uh, you guys asked for last session, uh, namely the autopsy examination notes that they perform on their fallen former uh, commander, uh, as well as delivering the schematics to uh, the sort of prehensile wing limb design that uh, the assassin that boarded your ship was using earlier. Jafal expressed interest in that. Yes, he did. So, uh, on top of all this, uh, um, some uh, some of the Enclave Pegasi dropped by the ship's uh, hangar with uh, three sort of armored hull cart sort of things, which uh, Jasper eventually explains is that uh, you had asked about uh, having some sort of aerial vehicles earlier. And initially, Jasper had... had uh, told you that no, that they wouldn't be able to spare any or, or, or wouldn't be useful to you because these are cloud ships run by Pegasi, but uh, he explains that it turns out they had uh, a few a few in storage and could spare a few. A total of three. Ooh, nifty! Yay! Uh, these schematics get uh, kind of delivered over, uh, kind of get delivered in uh, physical form in just a, 
as a bunch of documents and blueprints. And uh, I guess Javolt is going to take those down to Raven and they can start pouring over them. And he's also going to tell Raven about the vehicles, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm I'm running under the assumption that eventually everyone is kind of caught up on the situation. Okay. Uh, And the uh, results of the examination are also delivered. Uh, But included among including included among those notes are uh photocopies of some of his and pictures of some of his effects and some uh computer logs as well uh a certain series of which that were encrypted on Razorwing's computer and uh it seems that Razorwing had been communicating with uh some sort of outside entity and had been keeping logs of their communiques it's the Executive, isn't it? It's, totally, it's, it's pretty easy to tell that uh, that Razorwing may have gotten there. There is an approximate date and time for Skyfall's uh, liftoff, is that their flight test, and you know, as well as some other intel about uh, you know the nature of Skyfall's structure and their its repair status. You know, high priority targets to look out for as well, which would be how. The assassin might have gotten, might have known who and where to strike. Although curiously, nothing about uh, nothing about hellhounds, which might have explained why they were taken by surprise by that. <laughs> surprise hellhound. Yep. And of course, the uh, the medbay has uh, a bunch of uh, new patients now. Triggers, uh, trigger and firelight are busy working on them, including. Uh, yeah, including uh, one of the hellhounds who was struck down, who was nearly uh, <laughs> killed by this Pegasus wielding dual swords or whatever. Uh, and I get <laughs> on the ride over, uh, Zenkarn, you start feeling kind of craving for more rage again. Yay! <laughs> uh, I don't actually think I've got any more on me. So just remind me when I land, I want to go immediately talk to Tibbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, Tibbs, where would you be as all this is going down? Back to the dark room to try and get some goddamn sleep. <laughs> 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 well, uh, Zenkar knocks on your door, probably. Uh, knocks. <laughs> or just barges in. <laughs> just like, hey, t- hey, Tibbs. What do you want? Um, I'll... Close the door. Let me just double check that I actually have money. Um, be like, just, you know, um, wanted to ask how you were doing while we were, you know, away. Tibbs is going to let Zenkar think about what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I not allowed to care and or come and buy drugs from you? There we go. What do you need? Uh, I rage, please. Rage. Hmm. Let me see what I've got in stock. And, uh... God, I actually... I meant to write down a list of, like, potential things that Tibbs had, and I completely forgot to. Um... God. Uh... One moment. Let me just do something real fast. Cute list. Heads or tails? Heads. I'm sorry. Tibbs is out of rage. He's not made in any while. Hmm. A hoof. Um. Do you know when you're gonna get your next? Uh, like how fast you can get your next lot in, and if you know anywhere else I could go snag some. Well, as far as shipments are concerned, I've kind of cut off supply lines, given you know there's a war going on, and I'm not especially fond of losing my clientele and my workers. So that's not a thing that's gonna happen. Uh, if I happen to stumble across any enough materials, I could probably whip something up. Anything you need, like, what would you need exactly? Exactly. Uh, I'm not sure either <laughs> Din or I would know exactly. Yeah, off, off uh, hand, wait, wait, wait. I don't remember. Give me a sec. Um, are we gonna, are we really gonna wiki this? <laughs> oh, I've got the wiki open. Um, and it doesn't actually tell me, god damn it. <laughs> what is rage? It's okay, psycho. Hang on. What's psycho. psycho. Yeah, it's psycho. Um, 
I like how I typed in what is rage made of, and I got rage the video game, rage the movie. <laughs> this weekend, Fallout is dragons. The Maulers make drugs. <laughs> now, nah, doesn't sell me that either. Well, uh, I, I guess you're thinking of like chemistry station. Uh, yeah. Blueprints. Um. So just looking at uh. Just taking a look at like the the psycho page, um, given it's a, a compound of with military origins, um, but, but it like parts of it can be found in um, no no just just by looking at what it says. There I, you I'm go. Gonna... No no, I have a list. Uh, psycho, mate. Yep. Um, overdrive chemist one. Okay, psycho acid circuitry hub flower two and a stim pack. I shit you not. Okay. Um, that's, that's what it says. Acid circuitry hub flower too. Um, well, most of that stuff's probably going to be on the ship, except for hub flower, which I actually don't know what that is. Well, and it basically some kind of herb. That we can yeah. For How the... exactly to use circuitry? Oh, because oh. uh, Psycho is meant to have an auto injector. Um. I think. From what I remember, it's meant to have, like, some form of weird injector thing to it. Yeah. Um, okay, then. Yeah, it's supposed to, remember, it's a military product, so it's supposed to have controlled dosages. Um, which, you know, nobody gives a crap about in the wasteland. So, um, Tibbs is probably gonna need the herbs for it. Um, which, uh, I mean, I'd have to, I think, talk with Spud about that, about where specifically I could find them, but, um, especially, not, especially in the Badlands. Yeah, we're not likely to to find enough materials soon. I'm probably we're probably gonna have to like swipe it off some dead bodies. Alternatively, I could. Alternatively, I could raid the Med Bay. Would that be rage in the Med Bay? Why am I even asking that question? I can just find out. <laughs> um, Firelight would probably not take kindly to that. He's not here. He won't mind. Um, I'll, I will mind in his stead. How about this? Tibbs is gonna go look for it since uh, he's more or less allowed in there. Yeah. I'm gonna come with. So, do I need to roll to see if we we can find rage or the components thereof in the med bay? Um, yeah. Why don't I just use um da 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 blah that away to find any <laughs> rage whatsoever? That away to find drugs. <laughs> I'm gonna say probably not. Uh, why not? It'd be great. Because there's too much rage to pinpoint. Yeah, and also you'd get. Ah, you'd... I always just hit it close. I always just assumed it hit the closest thing. Well, rem you've always used that way to find a very specific person or place. Mm -hmm. All right, that is true. What should I roll, sir? Um, if you're, if you're raiding the, uh, the med bay, you're probably searching, so perception. Got it. I moment. One, two, three, plus nine. Components. I got a 12, which is not especially good. Wow, you, you can't seem to, you're pretty low on just raw herbs, and you can't seem to find any sort of, like, recreational drug storage. Some some of the you know more medical drugs certainly, but not. Uh, you don't know where Firelight has uh, confiscated the recreational stuff. Son of a but bitch! <laughs> you mean we can't just ask? He saw this coming. <laughs> he's and he's. Uh, Firelight's kind of keeping a close eye on you. I assume you haven't told him what you're looking for. Nope. Tibbs is not going to tell him either. So, <laughs> uh, Tibbs is just going to put a hoof on Zenkar and children. Go. Sorry, mate. Probably gonna have to uh, either get in contact with, uh, you know, some of the old uh, pals back at Apocalypse, or well, maybe we'll get lucky out there. Ugh, I really don't want to wait. <laughs> Tibbs is going to look Zenkar in the eye and go, "Well, tough shit." <laughs> You're tough. Wait. Fine. <laughs> 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 But sooner the better, please. Actually, I'm pretty sure, like, Firelight has some on him. <laughs> yeah, because he's going to give it yeah, to he, us. Yeah. <laughs> he totally give it to us. What are you talking about? <laughs> he loves me. I'm great. 
by now he's probably heard of the whole incident. He loves me. I'm great. <laughs> so wait, question: How does addiction work in this again? Um. Well, heck, heck. I mean, do we even care about like in-game effects at this point? Isn't aren't we just all role-playing it every anyway? Well, so, it, I, well. Basically, what happens is you get if you're taking a combat drug. Um, depending on if you've got a minor or like high level of addiction, um, you either take half or like full what that combat drug would like the bonus that combat drug would have given you. Mm. So in my case, I think because I've got a full addiction, we decided uh, I'm taking minus five. I think. <sighs> How much? Does uh, it... yep, yeah, yep. I'm taking minus five. Minus five to your to your damage output when you're not on a rage. Yep, which apparently is going to be all the goddamn time. <laughs> um. Well, finally, finally, we nerfed Zenkarn at last. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you will get the enjoyment of watching him go through withdrawal. That won't be enjoyable for anyone. <laughs> trust me. Yeah. I like how you put. So, so saith the paragon of justice. It'll be fun watching a drug addict, drug addict go through withdrawals. Yeah, let's let the psych receiver go through withdrawal. What can possibly happen? <laughs> Cute list role playing Zenkarn going through withdrawal will be suitable penalties, says Deliest. So yeah, Zenkarn, you are you are S O L. I am sad. <laughs> Excellent role playing. <laughs> you can't just say how you feel that makes me angry <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously alright fine is, well, if I can't, get, is if I can't get drugs off Tibbs I will just go and mope somewhere uh, and actually no better yet I'm gonna go buy some booze and then go mope somewhere <laughs> so uh after Javolt said uh, Javolt does have all his tech stuff, and he is planning to talk to Raven about it. But first of all, he wants to find Summer Snow. Okay. And uh, he wants to personally escort Summer Snow back to uh, wherever Flotsam is. Um, Flotsam will have already found Summer Snow. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like they weren't going to find each other the second they were both on the ship. That That would have been the first thing Flotsam did. Yeah. Summer On Snow, case, default is, Summer Snow is, is, is a kind of halfway between like strangling her with hugs and also strangling her from, how could you, don't you ever do that again? <laughs> you find it, you find it a little bit difficult to breathe, Flotsam. <laughs> uh, Flotsam is both contrite and affectionate. Ah. Summer Snow eventually calms down and just settles for patting you on the head and just going like, don't scare me like that again. <laughs> How often have you been doing this since I've been, <laughs> since you were away? <sighs> I don't have enough hosts to count that. <sighs> um, to clarify, what do you mean by this? Uh, do you mean negotiating with dangerous people or putting herself in dangerous situations or being attacked by people with weapons because there's a lot of variation in those statistics. Any Flotsam and all of the above. Flotsam just buries herself in summer snow and hugs tight and, and you can hear a muffled voice going, Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to give we are gonna give Flotsam's sister a heart attack by the time this thing is over. Or at least a panic attack. <sighs> Multiple panic attacks. Like, I thought just just defending the town was excitement enough, but, I mean, little you going up against the whole enclave there. That's, I mean, not just reckless, but incredible. Oh, I, I am so proud and annoyed at you. <laughs> just both at once. Thoughts and just nods. You know, I could share some of my own childhood tales... Maybe. If I would remember them. Yeah, okay. Anyway, the point is, I'm pretty sure this is part of growing up. Mm-hmm. Summer's note does not look convinced. It's it's the whole trying to find yourself thing. I mean, you ponies have cutie marks. It's a bit harder for 
those of us without it, but even with cutie marks, I'm not entirely sure what I'm talking about here, actually. And no one is surprised. Anywho, I take it things, uh, with your estranged relatives, um, went decently? I guess. Better than expected. Really? So if I'm... I mean, my dad turned out not to be a jerk, so... So that that was the whole thing, wasn't it? That that So your parents are in the Enclave, and over there happens to be your... Is that what's... Is that... My second dad. <laughs> your second dad? Oh. Yeah, just... first dad. Now I'm just imagining the two of them meeting. That That's going to be a very interesting day. They can share heart attack stories. <laughs> well, they've both got you, so I guess that's something. Uh, when do we mm. when do we get to go home, Flotsam? You can go home if you want, Snow. Not not without you. Well, we've got business to take care of here. But I'm, I mean, that's that's, that's that's what I'm asking, Flotsam. What do we need to do to finish we need to this? Stop the we need to stop the executive and lift all the dragon curses. There's only two of them left. She slowly starts nodding. To be entirely fair, the dragon curses, well, I expect at least one of them can be lifted through negotiation, and the other one is going to be exceedingly complicated. Yeah, this one's, this is the hard part, huh? And to be entirely fair, I'm not sure that's everything. I mean, those are the big goals, but then there's a little cleanup after that, you know, making sure that the uh, Dragon's Wall doesn't collapse into lawlessness after you lot leave, and, uh... Well, by that point, by that point, we can go home. Oh, and we can bring folks with us to help look after the town. Yeah. Would you be bringing Zenkarn with you, by any chance? Oh, I was thinking about the changelings from the vault. Oh, well, them too, of course. And, you know, if... Actually, yeah, that could work. I'm I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and the Well, yes, obviously. Have you met the love cats, uh, Summer Snow? I, I've forgotten. Well, there's... He's not for million. There's Zenkarn's pet, I guess. He's not really a pet. He's, like, just quiet. Yes. He... I did get a few cards from him. Yeah, he does that. And kind of left a cupcake in my room. You got a cupcake? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where he got it. I haven't even touched it, really. I was kind of like, maybe this is poisoned or something. Uh, Not a bit from Vermillion. If it's poisoned, it's poisoned with love. Uh, Jival suddenly just sort of comps and backs away and says, I need to check on something. And he just trots off. What are you checking on, Javolt? Uh, Javolt is going to try to find Vermilion and or Jin. Well, you have a hard time finding Jin. Uh, Vermilion is actually hanging out with Raven right now. And oh, well, that's... Offering some cookies to her. Yeah, that's convenient. And uh, Javolt gives Raven a wave and says, Can I borrow this intelligent... Neo feline are you is it even a feline? It, I can't tell. Raven just kinda shrugs and says it seems to be. Well yes, from appearance, but convergent evolution and all that. I wouldn't recommend dissecting it. Well obviously and not. If, and if you're not gonna dissect it, then I'd probably just leave the question alone. Well, I do need to talk to him. Talk to this cat thing. But uh The cat is intelligent. But Vermilion already happily nods and and practically bounces over to you and climbs up onto your back. And I probably don't want to talk about this in public, so uh, he just walks into the nearest supply closet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you push aside some brooms and pails and whatnot, and you are now in a very tightly enclosed and dark room with this cat for some reason. So... You left Summer Snow a cupcake. He nods, and nods, 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 nods. 
Does that have any particular cultural significance? Because you give most people cookies and you gave her a cupcake. I'm wondering if there's a difference here. He shakes his head and from seemingly out of nowhere produces another cupcake and holds it up to you. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I, I was a little worried that... Uh, well, are you... Have you been made aware of... Uh, your traveling companion's own uh, feelings and intentions toward the mayor? He shakes his head, still smiling. Romantic feelings and intentions toward Summer Snow? He still shakes his head obliviously. I have reason to believe Jin wants to pursue Summer Snow romantically. He lets out a cute little... <gasps> and his eyes start to sparkle. A- I could be entirely wrong. I haven't been. But, you know, I could be very right, so. He starts vibrating intensely with excitement. That being said, I understand that Jin is a changeling, and they tend to play their emotions close to heart for cultural reasons, as I think of it. <laughs> so this this may not actually progress as speedily as either of us would like, so. He starts hopping from from uh, from one foot to the other, just kind Vermillion. of nodding and very excited. Vermilion, patience. He uh, it's a- he he attempts to calm down, but his foot still keeps tapping. <sighs> My point is, the uh, cupcake thing could be interpreted as a more expressive gesture, and I I just wanted to avoid any of that particular sort of drama. He nods. Maybe not quite getting it, but... As in, it could be interpreted... You give your friends cookies, and you give specific other ponies cupcakes for specific... I honestly thought you were also crushing on her. He just shakes his head, neutrally. Just, just, uh... Just... Not, it's not really even, like, affecting him as much. It's like, he's, he actually pulls out the card and the pen, and uses his little mouth to kind of right on the card and says and uh, when he holds it up to you he says, I found some found the ingredients for a batch of cupcakes congrats, congratulations you know, I just realized something I am talking about my companions (laughs) romantic lives with a vegetarian neo-feline in a supply closet on a flying ship Javolt has a rare Javolt. moment of perspective. Savor That's this. Right, Javolt. <laughs> Your life is pretty awesome. <laughs> it must be Wednesday. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, good chat. And he uh, holds out his cloth. And uh, gives and uh, Vermilion gives you a midair high five. <laughs> and uh, he. Uh, Opens the supply closet. He he holds up the cupcake again to make sure you grab it. Yeah, okay. Javolt grabs it. You, and he says, you, you, it seems like you utterly make his day when you do that. And uh, Javolt turns to, uh, I'm assuming Raven is right outside the supply closet. <laughs> yeah, just kind of just kind of staring. Not close enough to, that she was likely within earshot, but just kind of like, okay, what's going on here? You know, this seemed like a good idea in my head. Javolt, that is the story of your life in one sentence. <laughs> yes, well, they're not all bad ideas. And Javolt just strides out of the supply closet and, you know, pockets the cupcake for later and says, No, where were we? Oh, yes, these schematics. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I know it goes <laughs> without saying, but Vermilion is the best. Just the best. <laughs> Vermilion runs off to do something mysterious. <laughs> oh gosh, Jin is not going to be. Jin is not going to have a good time, is he? You know, I realized that you know Javolt now has a shipping partner. I don't know about from... partner. This could <laughs> this could very well go even beyond Javolt. An apprentice. I believe you are the apprentice in this scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you just, you have no idea what you have unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he didn't mention any of the other. No. <laughs> yeah. Pray for that bit of good fortune. Okay. Uh, at some point, once it seems that things are kind of settling down, uh, Chase gets on the PA and calls for all of the Maulers to come back to the command room. All right, then. Fine, but I'm taking my bottle with me. <laughs> you, he's surprisingly hard to track down. You see him kind of run past you very quickly, holding some very colorfully decorated cards in his mouth. I think he, did you say butters or bottle? Bottle. Whatever. Yeah, I'm bringing alcohol to this meeting. None of you can stop me. <laughs> I'm a mature adult and I can make my own decisions. You're an adult. Well, for what it's worth, I think it was, what, two, three meetings ago that um, Tempered Steel did something similar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, uh, when you arrive in the command center, Chase is, still has uh, communication up with uh, Jasper, and it seems they've they're uh, talking about kind of kind of wrapping things up, trying to make sure that uh, all the necessary trades have been completed, and that you know they're they're actually getting ready to like leave and get out of each other's lives forever. Uh, Jasper looks through the screen uh, when Flotsam arrives, I assume, and just kind of says. Well, I think this is this is goodbye for a while, anyway. Flotsam looks sad and wait. I'm sorry that your efforts had to be interrupted by our fool's errand, and that apparently your foe was involved in our attack as well. We've had plenty of ponies meddling in our in our affairs the last couple of months, and. I'm sure we won't take kindly to this one as well, so whatever vengeance you seek to visit upon this executive, by all means, give him another one for us, too. Watson starts writing a name on her grenade. <laughs> oh, no, wait, she has a list. She starts writing another name on her list. <sighs> With that, Chase, I guess all I can say is I'm sorry. And Chase just... <sighs> wipes at his uh, forehead with a, with a towel that's probably soaked in sweat by this point, and says, And all I can say is, good riddance, never come back, we never want to see you again. Which uh, gets a little chuckle out of, out of Jasper. And the Pegasus says, farewell then, and the communication is turned off. And after about a tense minute, one of the engineers at the monitors reports, They uh, seem to be turning around, sir. The indomitable spirit is moving out of our airspace. And Chase just lets out a huge sigh of relief, just like, <sighs> Okay, set her back down where we started. We're landing the ship, and we are making some freaking repairs. Well, it's uh, good to be past that, finally. You're, you're telling me. I'm not entirely sure how many repairs we actually need to make. No, I it, mean, it, there was... From what I hear, it won't take more than the rest of the night. We'll be ready to move out by the morning, but dear God, I am Celestia and Luna in heaven. I am not ready to get involved in this stupid war yet. Just... And besides, it, we could pick... We could probably stand to pick up some allies while we're down there anyway. This was always only supposed to be a flight test. Wasn't supposed to be a frickin' sky battle. Well, you've got to admit, that did put the ship through its, uh, paces. Yeah, now we know what it's like to be boarded. Unbelievable. Just completely unbelievable. How in the world does the executive manage to get a message out to frickin' Enclave Remnants? So that they know exactly when and where to ambush us up in the freaking sky. You know, I'm pretty sure that if you were right now here right now, Powder Cake would probably have a a definitive yet vague explanation for that. The executive is the executive, yeah. <sighs> I owe you all a huge thanks. As crazy as your lives your 
your lives have made mine. You pretty much saved the ship, so... We are glad to help. I mean, we would not probably be standing here talking about this. Nor would the Enclave be turning around with their tail between their legs if uh, it weren't for you guys. Especially you, Flotsam. I mean, especially you, Flotsam. Flotsam looks sheepish and hides behind Summer Snow. I am taking a nap for a very long time. Uh, you guys kind of work with my engineers and whatnot to uh, to just keep an eye on things, just so I can have like a few precious hours of sleep. Can I can I trust you with that? Can I trust you not to blow up the ship? Mm. Take another swig. Sure, why not? Tibbs is going to look at uh, look at Chase and go. I make no promises. I promise to repair any damage that might occur, I'll or at least to oversee it. You know. Why do I even talk to you guys? And he's and he as he passes <laughs> by, he snatches whatever bottles incarn has got in his hoof and just takes a swig of it and leaves. <laughs> does he leave the bottle? Or does no, he he, he, with the he leaves with the bottle. Yeah, I'm I'm tracking him down. I'm getting my boots <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's it's pretty easy to just yank it back, and he doesn't even put up a fight. Just like whatever. So cool. on to more important uh, discussion. The ship the ship lurches a bit as the engines fire up, and they the the ship slowly starts to descend back towards the ground. Now it's clear that when Flotsam becomes princess of the Dragon Maw, that uh, Zenkarn is going to be her primary knight. I would like to claim the position as head researcher. Say what now? Yeah, well, I'm going back to hate it after this. Well, yes, obviously we we don't want you princess this young. You have to learn politics and all that. She just blinks and goes. I'm going to go help Silver Ranch and the others with the repairs. And she takes off. Does no one else see this as inevitable? Am I the only one who sees this as inevitable? I thought I was going to be princess after all this, says Aurelia. Well, there can be more than one princess. Yeah, actually, that's true. There were two princesses of ponies, right? Yeah, and look how well that turned out for the world. Well, the zebras also helped out with that, let's be honest. Oh, and I'm not going to deny it. It wasn't just but... the fact that there were two princesses in the world. I think the point being made is that having princesses of different species might actually provide a more balanced system. Yeah, the dragons might not be bombed into oblivion next time. This is not a conversation I expected to happen today. It's Javolt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that in character? Yeah, that's said that's in character. That is a very valid point. To be fair, I'm not up and up on political science as I am the other sciences. I was always more of a small, large scale, not a medium scale type person. Whatever that means, sure. You know, chemistry and physics and whatnot. Cool. That all goes over my head. Still, yeah, we beat the Enclave. That's gotta feel good. Yay us. <laughs> yeah, yay us. Oh, wait, no, my my plasma caster. Didn't I fix that? Oh, yeah, you did. Right. <laughs> she checks it again to make sure it's still working. She can still turn it on and off. See, I even painted the little smiley face on it. Oh. Okay, I need a bucket of paint real quick. <laughs> she goes off to... Actually, you know what? This thing's, you know, needed some kind of personal touch for a while now. I'm gonna... Yeah. She starts looking for where she can find some paint. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, the ship... Temp. Mm. The ship keeps on heading down until about, you know, within half an hour. It's very slowly as to not, like, shake the ship too much. It settles its cloud base back down, pretty much where you started at the crash site, and settles back down with a big old... <sighs> yeah. Skyfall lands, the engines slowly die down, and the engineers get to work on repairing stuff in the hull, uh, you know, to making reinforcements, you know, checking all sorts of things with the engines, getting the diagnostics, and basically the, the ship becomes, once again, very busy place. And uh, as the entrances and exits are established, uh, quite a few ponies actually leave the ship entirely. Not wanting to really go through something like that again. Next time the ship takes off. 
Um, presuming that he isn't called upon to help with any of the engineering or repair things, um, Tempered Seal is going to try and find a relatively open space and try to practice his flying. Well, you can probably head outside for a bit of that into the cold night air. That is a fair point. He will go outside and he will practice flying with his hammer. By this point, the uh, the sun has completely set behind the jagged edges of the maw, and there's only the barest light of twilight left. And yeah, you were able to practice your hammer-based flight thing, uh, which is still kind of shaky. It's not uh, not the most consistent thing in the world, and it's kind of hard to keep it going for extended lengths of time. But uh, you're able you're able to hover at a pretty respectable clip. <laughs> for a giant minotaur hanging off of a giant hammer. Like, I mean, it's it's a serviceable flight power. Just, I, just barely so, but... I think I'm starting to get the hang of this! And uh, as you float through the air, uh, with your enhanced perspective next to the ship, you can actually see some uh, figures approaching on the roads that seem to be... What are Several of them, they seem to be kind of a mix. Several of them cloaked, several of them in uh, kind of heavy armor. What, I mean, do they look, do I recognize, would still recognize them at all? It's, they're too, they're too far away in the darkness to tell. I mean, it, do they look like they're trying to approach stealthily or? No, no, they seem to be just uh, traveling along the road. Steel will, um, is there any, is there anyone like outside on the guard towers or anything like that? Um, not a whole lot. The the contingent uh, of uh, Skyfall guards is mostly on the inside. There's absolutely no one outside at all. There's there's like one or two. Okay. Um, he will. Are they close enough that Skill could shout to them? Yeah. Hey, there's. I see. I see a group that's approaching. I'm gonna go out there and uh, greet them. They uh they get they become alert and nod and take the take their positions at the uh at their posts and one of them sends a long word to get the guards back out on the balcony again. And Steel is going to land on the ground and walk out to meet them. Uh in short order you manage to uh reach not quite halfway, but uh but you manage to meet them on their on their way here and as you get closer it's Pretty easy to tell that these seem to be a mix of uh, four horses uh, tribals. Well, hello there. You bringing uh, word from the front, or what brings you to Skyfall? Uh, one of the uh, war-decorated uh, ponies steps forward and says, uh, "Yes, we're we've actually been sent to Skyfall to kind of establish uh, Skyfall as a communication center, if possible." How many how many of them are there specifically? There seem to be nine of them. Three from war, two from uh pestilence, two from death, and two from famine. Alright. Um is there Okay. Are they giving off anything to suggest that they're that they're not who they claim they are? Uh you can roll perception. Sure, why not? Just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Let's see, I got seven. I got an 11. Sorry, I got a... Okay, so you got an 11? Um, you can't... Uh, you, you are pretty darn confident that these are who they say they are. They are. These are... There's no disguise here. There's no deception here. These just seem to be the, the real deal. All right. Um, he will um, step to the side and indicate to um, Skyfall with his hammer, and kind of like an indication of... Well, let's go. Let's go then. So, sorry, what was that? He will um, kind of step, do a sidestep, half turn, to um, so that he winds up pointing at Skyfall with his hammer in sort of a, all right, well, let's go then. All right, um, and they, good. they nod and follow you towards the city. Steel will attempt to do another low level practice. Flight uh, as they go back. This uh, confuses some of the famine. <laughs> some of some of the raiders, uh, former raiders, get pretty darn confused at this, but uh, they kind of they kind of shrug it off and allow you to hover near them as they head towards head towards the ship. 
um is um yeah and once they um reach the entrance he'll look up to the guard and say i've got um emissaries or um messengers or what have you from the four horses they're here to set up a compost or communication station or what have you well that part there'll be there'll be some more uh some more reinforcements coming in and the changelings from stable 998 will be apparently providing that part of things but we're here to manage communications with the four horses there's some new tech going on that uh, that the gearheads from the War Tribe, including Gearhead, have been working on in conjunction with them and with apparently the Steel Rangers are coming along too, which is going to be very interesting. Are they explaining this to the guards? or They're explaining this to you. Are they saying it loud enough that the guards can hear? Uh, guys are just barely coming up on the approach now. Oh. Well, he was waiting to say that until they were close enough that the guards could hear. Well... Okay, yes, the guards can hear then. And the guards don't make any special reaction, so I don't know why you're waiting for them. Okay, he um yeah, let's they go he goes in and um where where would he where would it be that he'd want to take them then, or would he know that? Um they don't seem too sure themselves, so the apparent leader just says, uh, I guess we would just like to meet with the mayor and see where he would like us for now. Is there a meeting room or just the, um, just like the command room? Um, there is a conference room near the, uh, near the observation deck that can be used. Okay. Um, yeah, Steel will take them there. All right. And, uh, over time, and this is something you all eventually become aware of, not only do a contingent of four horses arrive, but, uh, there's, uh, at first in disguise, but eventually they drop the disguise. There's a squad of like five uh, of the sort of cybernetically enhanced changelings from Stable 998 also arrive at the ship about yeah, within not too long. And then some steel rangers from the north also kind of march towards the ship, accompanied by the B team. Hey, they're back! Yes, uh, <laughs> Soccer, Lilypad, uh, Ten Paces, Excalibur, Zephyr, and Short Circuit. Uh, they all accompany the Steel Rangers into the ship. And, uh, the B team kind of goes their separate ways, but uh, Lilypad specifically seeks out, uh, seeks out you guys, the Molotus, the first one she can find, which is. Oh, goodness, it's Javolt. <laughs> Leopad, uh, kind of, wherever you are, Leopad just kind of knocks on the wall to get your attention. Excuse me a second. I need to uh, make sure that this doesn't blow up. She takes a couple of steps back and waits. And there we go. That's always a sentence you want to walk in on. She <clears throat> clears her throat and steps forward and says, Are all the uh, Maulers here in, mm, on, the, I... on the ship? Well... Most of us. It has their... For uh, certain reasons, uh, one of our members had to remain in the new city. What what were Stable 998, I think we were calling it? Oh, was it the... Was it the, uh, the changeling? Yes, yes it was. Huh. What's, but we also... What's, know... what's, so what's Chica doing now? Uh, she's training to be either a mayor or a queen or some combination of that. Okay, well, we obviously we heard about uh, your little spat with the Enclave. New spreads fast, doesn't it? Well, uh, it was... Radio Tower. It was Smack Talk who... Smack Talk's, Smack Talk's put together a pretty impressive list, a set of contacts. He's been very good at Honestly, a bit too good at uh, gathering information. Hmm. I mean, any information he gets, he, he broadcasts anyway. Well, yes. Honestly, I think open information would be better in the long run. I mean, a lot of... I'm just I'm just worried that at some point in information web, the executive's going to find a way to get his hooks in. On... Getting him information or on getting information from him? 
either way, either feeding false information to Smack Talk or finding a way into that incredibly locked down <laughs> broadcast room. Well, giving him information is essentially going to happen anyway. Smack Talk is... Hmm, well, how do I put this? Smack Talk's not really a military broadcast anyway. Yes. As for getting information from him, that's far less likely. Yeah, it's it's not it's not the hugest network, but it's been enough. Mostly just mm-hmm. ponies calling in, but anyway, uh so yes, the uh the B team is officially reporting in, so since things are about to get very, very serious. We had a yes. we had a we had a hell of a time convincing the Steel Rangers at Slayer Base to even consider making a move against the cult. Uh, how is Monitor doing, by the way? Monitor is doing very well. In fact, that's kind of part of why the Steel Rangers are here. Good, good. I, I mean, I would be there to help her personally. It's just with everything going on, you know. Anyway, uh, so have the other groups arrived here yet? The, the changelings and the uh, <laughs> the four horses. I. Terribly sorry, but I've been locked up in this lab for a while, so I can't actually tell you that. Right, okay. I will t- I... take a look around then. E- eventually, we're all going to meet up and, I guess, talk about this war we're about to wage, so be ready yeah. for that. Lilypad? Yes. It is good to see you it's... alive and uh, not too mangled. It's It's been an adventure. Life generally is. Well, this group has especially been... uh, She just shakes her head and walks off. Do you think I set her up to go crazy? She asks Raven. I'm sorry, who was that? Uh, She's the one who leads the quote-unquote B-team, which is basically people we send to places that we can't go because we need to go other places. Okay, and you put a steel rain, a no nonsense steel ranger in charge of that. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Well, they still seem to be. I mean, she hasn't she hasn't given you a letter of resignation, so I'm guessing that's a positive. She does work with um, a couple of ex mercenaries, an ex slaver, a kid, and I forget who else. Out of character, the Black Lotus traveling company. I thought that was the Merc. I need to look at this list. They got they got kind of absorbed into. Yeah. So the Minotaur and the two exosuit wearing the Pegasus and the Unicorn. Yep. So yes. How do you keep managing to find these ponies? Generally, I think it's my strength of will. Mm-hmm. No, I'm quite serious. Mm Mm-hmm. So I guess, uh... Oh, boy. This is going to be kind of a mess because there are so many freaking characters in play, but we'll try to simplify this as much as possible. But eventually, all of the uh, Malas are called into uh, one of the big conference rooms. Question. What would I have to roll to uh, make a sort of buffet table for every party involved, you know, just the buffet table that they can all you'd have eat to, at this meeting. You'd have to make a ton of food in a relatively short amount of time. So and butters. <laughs> <laughs> so and and you'd you'd probably have to enlist uh enlist Vermillion as well. Um gosh, we did cooking challenges a while ago. What did we roll for those? Precision? Knowledge? I don't even know. Just roll a d20. All right. One flat d20. I got an 18. And I got a natural 20. So apparently, to answer your question, what would it take to uh, make a get a buffet table going for all the people involved? Apparently, really freaking easy, especially with uh, Vermilion's help. Holy crap, you managed to... I mean, you, we talk about buffet, you managed to get a buffet. <laughs> Like you have to use the next three rooms over to to make room for all the food you have made available. 
most of it very sweet, but <laughs> there's there's some actual food in there too. Some hearty soups, some some meats for those who prefer it, and lots and lots of veggies. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And and quite a bit of uh, sparkle cola as well. <laughs> like a big old keg of it too. It's weird. You have no idea how Vermilion got his got his little paws on it. I'm I'm guessing that there are lots of cupcakes and cookies and cake. Yep, lots of, lots of sweets, lots of lots of snacks, lots of bread. And uh, Javon turns to Vermilion and uh, very quietly he leans in and says, "How much of this did you steal?" Just out of curiosity. For the first time since you've met him, Vermilion looks actually kind of offended. And he's, he he qu- he quickly just shakes his head and just kind of pats his own chest very proudly. Huh. Really? He Secretly, nods. Vermilion is a better chemist than Tibbs. <laughs> a better cook <laughs> than everybody. <laughs> Secretly, the potty pet is OP. Again. <laughs> Vermilion is, again, the best. He rolled a natural 20, guys. Those kinds, those kind of bend the laws of the universe a bit. Love cats bend the laws of the universe. You've got quite the network, don't you? I'm sorry, I shouldn't really be questioning this, but you know, scientist and all that. He <laughs> he 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 bends a piece of paper so that it forms a little tiara and writes uh best at finding and making food award and puts it on his head. <laughs> and parades okay. around in it a bit. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm guessing that everyone else comes in. So apparently <laughs> for for all of the mullers and all of your guests, uh there is a plethora of food to enjoy <laughs> as you all coordinate this this war you're about to go into. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> How does Chase react? Chase is asleep. Oh come on. Chase is in his quarters, uh <laughs> Snoring like a chainsaw. <laughs> okay. Yes, everyone else has got to have some reaction to this. Um, the the tribals and the changelings and the and the uh, steel rangers are kind of rather impressed. Gil <laughs> is also very very impressed. So everyone <laughs> gets their food and and uh, just I guess. <laughs> It's, it, they have a very sort of tense chat as everyone kind of settles down and gets gets comfortable. Even though they were expecting to be discussing serious plans at this point, but apparently everyone's got to eat first now. But eventually maps are, are pulled out. Uh, some discussion takes place over current events right now. And basically, any questions you want to ask before the official discussion begins, you now have just about anybody who knows anything about what's happening in the mall right now to ask. It wouldn't it, it might be better though to wait until we hear what they have to say and I mean they have briefings for us or that, don't they? Like well, mo- yeah, but most of the briefings are is stuff you kind of already know. The four horses are holding uh at the edge of the uh voodoo curse territory. Uh the changelings are assisting with scouting and subterfuge. And uh, Steel Rangers are just beginning to mobilize, but uh, they're they're getting ready to commit forces to the uh, to the western part of the cult territory, including what may have to be Gold Rush. They may have, they may they may have to occupy Gold Rush as a forward base in order to make any serious moves against uh, against the Red Skull Cathedral. Do we know exactly where the executive is right now? Still no intel on that front. Even the changelings are stumped. Right. They don't even have any leads at all. Just blow everything up. We'll find they, him eventually. They, they assume he's holed up in the Red Skull Cathedral, but they've also got conflicting reports about uh, just just about everywhere, all over the place. Really, there's a there. Ah. They, he seems to start have started employing body doubles. Hmm. They've they have <laughs> a couple of executive corpses have turned up. I'm going to be entirely honest. I think right now the biggest threat would be 
Astaroth, that's the central dragon? Yep. How's that? Let me put it this way. We know, or at least we assume we know, that we can either negotiate with Vasuki, or if worse comes to worse, we can kill her. Are- yeah, okay. Aurelia was like, oh, wait, when, 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 when did we decide to negotiate? Oh, okay. That being said, even if we do convince her not to uh, use the curse or to lift the curse or whatever, Astaroth cannot be negotiated with. Well, and being the we... Elder Dragon could force Fazuki into a position where she would be forced against us. One of the as one of the uh, one of the uh, war ponies raises a hoof and says, "Actually, we've got reason to believe that Fazuki is pretty much on the cult's side and is actively assisting them." I'm not suggesting putting Fazuki against the cult. I'm suggesting convincing Fazuki to go against the executive. It's a subtle distinction. They're but... basically one and the same, and we it's it's hard to escape the notion that Vasuki and the executive are working pretty much directly together. Mm. Based on the magic that that the former famine was able to obtain from the executive, which could have come from Vasuki's offerings. And the Should fact the... and the fact that Vasuki has apparently been able to kind of uh switch off the curse for a select few of the cult members at a time. Allowing them to use magic and to yeah. and to use guns. Do we do we know where Vizuki is located and can we get to it? We do not. We do not know yet. We haven't. We haven't been able to to reach the Dragonstone, and even if we did, uh, we wouldn't know what how exactly to what exactly to channel with it. Well, I managed to activate a Dragonstone by hitting it with my hammer. Well then. You guys would be the specialists, then. We need to get you to that Dragonstone in order to... That would be where Skyfall came in. I can... I primarily see Skyfall serving as a quick insertion vehicle, rather than an in-conflict vehicle. And we actually, the uh, three groups, kind of take a glance at each other and we say, we've actually been... In the, in the interest of teaming up and coordinating our efforts, we've been thinking of making this basically our uh, mobile HQ. Hmm. Yes, I could see how that would work. Does Does the executive and his forces have anything that could um, stop an aerial insertion? No vehicles, but they do have plenty of Pegasi and hybrids. Well then, I suppose I'll have to uh, make some parachutes then. Do we do we have access to the kind of forces that be able to fight that off? I mean, because can... what I'm thinking is, if we can manage it, we could try and get get the air get um the city over where the dragon stone is, drop in from above, use that to find out where the dragon thing is. Once we do that, we get back up, we fly over there, and then someone can keep. Then we can go in and clear that clear that thing out and take care of Vasuki. That's that's the general idea. We can we can use the ship the ship to insert a few more troops along, so it's not just you alone out there in that battleground. I'm going to be honest. I don't think we will be able to defeat and or destroy the executive until we deal with the two dragon curses. That remain true, but if we can at least remove the voodoo curse, then they will lose well, their advantage, and we can push. We can push back and well, mop up the cult, and that will be one less thing to worry about. Well, the key thing is here: we know where the dragonstone is, correct? We have some. We have a set of coordinates, yes. Although it's it's only like a couple miles east of the redstone cathedral, and it will be fairly heavily guarded. Right. We don't know where the executive is. And hitting the redstone may not be worth it if we don't know if the executive is actually there. It may be uh, more feasible for, let's say, the B team to go after the dragon stone while us dragon maulers wait outside the cathedral. Uh, what? No, because one, the, sim- one, one, the B team wouldn't would not necessarily know how to properly channel the dragon stone magic to you know seek out the location of the Draculich, and two, you can't just hang outside the entrance of the cathedral. They will have that guarded. 
Right. I mean, the key thing is we don't know for sure where the executive is, and that's the thing we really want to hit. What we do know is where the dragon stone is. We can use that to find the dragon. Then we can take out the dragon. Who knows? Maybe in the process we'll find out where the executive is. Who knows? Maybe there's an offhand chance the executive will be hiding there. One of the changelings nods and says, really, at this point, finding the executive is secondary to just the main threat, which is that Draco Lich. There are two Draco Liches. And we don't we don't know where the last one would be. Obviously in the center of the valley. I mean, there's a big volcano. Yeah, and you try sending some scouts there. Fair point. I suppose we would have to deal with Fuzuki first. That being said... Well, it's our best play at this point, at, at any rate. It's 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 the closest. I do, have to, it's the closest thing we have to solid information. I do have a couple of robes that resemble that of cultists. Infiltration as cultists may be somewhat difficult, but I think it can be done. On well, the changeling shakes his head and says, "Their security protocols have gotten pretty tight since they." got all military they're they they're on the lookout for spies too it's we've lost a few of our own trying to infiltrate them mm. we do have uh swift was his name swift the hybrid yeah we do have a um former cult member or two yeah but he's been out of the cult for a very long time uh what about cookie crumbles Cookie Crumbles is probably just... Where did he go after... Is he still in Ribcage, or... Did he go back, or... I can't remember. I don't recall what he did. He ended up moving in with the Changelings. Right, yeah, that's right. That's what he did. Yeah, because he... You convinced him to... That the cult was not all it's... All it was cracked up to be. And then, of course, there's... There's Mighty Hyde Bill. And one of the... One of the... One of the four horses has a report that there is some sort of crazed buffalo that is successfully kind of <laughs> kind of uh, attacking cultist encampments. Oh, well, yeah, but, yeah. but he's kind of a wild card out there, so he also hasn't exactly been an ally to the four horses either, so who knows what his agenda is out there. Do they know where he is? Not presently. Last, last I checked, he was just kind of bull charging north. Okay, probably not worth it to try to go find him. Hmm. We need to get to the Dragonstone, and assuming the Red Scale Cathedral is near Vasuki, we would need to be there fairly quickly after activating the Dragonstone. Why the Red? St why? Why are you focused on the Redstone Cathedral right now? I'm assuming. I admit it may not be a correct assumption. How well guarded is the uh, Dragonstone at night? About as well as it's protected during the day. Hmm. Look, our true advantage is that we can hit him from above, and we have the same method of getting out of there once we have what we need. And, with our air support, once we know where it is, we can get out of there and then get there ahead of them, and then we can hold them off while we... Do we... Do we do we have any form of radio jammer or communication jammer? Hmm. What about the radio? What? You're asking about communication? We have radio. No, I want to jam their communications. Oh, jammer. Actually, we don't we don't, we don't have jamming technology, but we have come here for another purpose regarding communication. Oh? Uh the changelings and then one of the steel rangers, uh they bring out some kind of boxy-looking devices. And uh, Changing says, you recently put uh, the AI monitor in contact with Arm Ormar, right? Yes, I did. They've been working on... They've been working on this uh, new form of communication that's... Frankly, it's over our heads, but they want to uplink it with uh, Skyfall. So, what is it? It's... Oh, it's... Some kind of, some kind of data transfer protocol device thing that it'll it'll apparently it'll allow the 
it allow for a secure communication line between, well, all of our forces on the ground? Um, Using Skyfall's relay. Well, once Javolt- Jason's up, we should run it by him, and then, yeah. Yeah, that's basically what we're waiting for. Javolt uh, turns to the side and uh, privately contacts Monitor. All right. You, so. You, how do you do that again? <laughs> Don't you have with, to? Use- uh, with a pit buck, I think. With Flotsam's pit buck? I, I don't know. Maybe it's a radio. Fla- what, Flotsam, I, Flotsam's the one with the pit buck. Yeah, I guess. And you basically use a... Well, she can just give it to Javolt if he wants it. Okay, uh, Javolt contacts Monitor and uh, very quietly asks, um, this new communication module that uh, the Changelings and the Steel Rangers brought up, is communication the only thing it does? But also, yes, it, it also allows for uh, for any sort of data transfer between two computer systems. So it can so, send, not not terribly quickly, but packets of data. Hmm. So we don't have to I, keep using, so I don't have to keep using radio signals to hack my way into other other uh, commu- other systems like that. I can actually use a different wavelength altogether. Hmm. I don't know how right. stable it'll be, but. This is what Ormar and I have been working on. Yes. I was actually rather curious as to whether you could remotely control Skyfall with this device. Oh. <laughs> that would be interesting. I, no, this wouldn't, I mean, I guess if I send it a large enough data packet, but it would be so delayed is the thing. It would be, okay. it would be controlling on such a, such a lag. Most, mm, most, most of the, most of the, the high efficiency protocols are for, are for uh, communication devices. Next question. Could you send false radio transmissions over, say, the cultist radios? I don't know enough about their protocols and whose voice to imitate. Mm. We're, Fair. From what I understand, the, the four horses are trying to interrogate a few prisoners about that, but uh, progress has been slow. Are they hacking? Are they hacking what we'd be normally use for radio? Yeah, say it's it's the reason we came up, came up with this is that just standard radio communication for just about everything is starting to get a bit insecure. Mm. Well, once we get this set up, could we send over false reports over the normal radio thing, kind of throw them off? I suppose. And uh, one last very important question: How are you doing? I'm. It's a. It's a little intimidating to be around these military types all the time. Well, some of them are pretty nice. Yeah. Well, I'm terribly sorry that you uh, had to live in this era, and I hope that your future life is much more peaceful and profitable. Well, that's kind of why we're doing this, right? Indeed. Good talking to you. And uh, he signs off. All right. All right. So, once we get this new thing up, we could let out a false communication that implies we're going to be attacking elsewhere and direct their to see if we can't get them to direct their forces in that direction. Maybe who knows? They won't have them in place to hit us when we get to the Dragonstone and the Suki. One of the st- is- one of the Steel Rangers goes. We don't. The problem is, we suspect they might be listening, but we aren't sure exactly when and where they're listening, on what frequency, and who is. True, but... What is the uh, most... What is the most probable known location of the Executive that is not the Dragonstone or the Red Scale Cathedral? We, It has to be the... the we can only assume right now that it's the Red Scale Cathedral. I'm asking which is the most probable. There is no most probable. We don't know. If you had to guess. If we had to guess wherever Vasuki's lair is, which we don't know. Well, if he is in Vasuki's lair, we'll, we'll be meeting him shortly anyway. My intention was to broadcast that we would be launching a major assault on the assumed position, which we would not actually be doing, but it would be enough to divert their forces. We can't... We, we can't... We can't make a play with intel we don't have. Mm. Well, the point is to 
if we make too obvious a play, they'll know that, well, something's up. True. So we can't make it obvious. We can't, Maybe we can't rely on it, but we can try and do something and hope maybe it gives us an advantage. Hope's not a huge thing to rely on in this, especially in this war. We need, I suggest focusing more on what we do once we get down there and land. Real fast. The Dragonstones have never been exactly where the Dragon's Lair is, right? No. They, they've always pointed towards some remote location. Okay. Would we be would we be able to, after activating the stone, get enough information to at least make a a good enough guess of where the lair might be? Well, once well, once that dragon zone goes off, everyone will know where the lair is. I'm, right, I remember. When I hit the first dragon stone it pointed a light directly at it. Yeah, that light will right. that light will be seen for miles. Well it's not like the Draco Lich is gonna be able to leave it wherever it is, right? No. Well what once well, we have that No, Smaug actually managed to leave his lair. Oh, that's right, yeah. Because because the <laughs> couple members of the B-team kind of shrink back a bit with that. <laughs> well, I just going by what I'd seen, it didn't seem possible, but suppose that also makes sense. Uh, still, given the, the uh, sheer... I don't know, amount of resources that are going into this Draco Lich. If it's not already moving, then they're probably not keeping it where the lair's going to be. I mean, if it, what I'm getting at is if the, if the Draco Lich can move, they're not going to keep it where the Dragonstone is going to point to. So hmm. the sooner we can get that information, the sooner we can make a plan of action. Once we know where, like, where the two possible locations are, we can strike just from the intel we have. Uh, we can make the the faint plan happen. We can well, say, do we, do we oh, know we're whether the st- dragon stone points to the lair or the dragon? That is actually a good question. We don't actually know. Hmm. Aurelia says that's that's true. We don't. They just well, they but... just they just point to that location. Is the first dragon stone we went to? Is that actually why the... do they why do they point there at all? Why would they? I mean, I guess. I guess for Glaurung it made sense because he wanted people to try finding his lair and getting trapped by all the gold and getting... Is is the Glaurung Dragonstone, is that under cultist territory control? I mean, that's close to Gold Rush, so not really, but yeah, kind of. It's under executive uh, control, at least. Because, depending, we could... I mean, if that was a place we could reach, we could do a test, we could possibly do a test run there. Uh, Javon turns to work. the... Uh, changelings and says can you uh, possibly ask Oromar how the dragon stones work specifically in this that's regard a, that, that's oh, yeah, we, we can actually tap a tap the uh, a Draco Lich for answers yeah yeah that's we should totally ask him all kinds of questions about this although he probably hasn't cared in a great number of years but we we need to spend some time setting up the uplink for that you know what I'm gonna go I'm gonna go get how how long has it been that Chase has been sleeping? By now, about an hour and a half. I'm gonna go see if I can get Chase and it seems like a good time to get his involvement, at least to confirm the whole uplink. <laughs> Alright. Steel is going to go find Chase. His wherever it I'm get I'm guessing he knows where Chase would be sleeping. Yeah, the his quarters are the location of which are fairly well known. Yes, he will go there and he will knock on the um, door. Mm. Mayor Chase, sir. Mm. I'm sorry to be waking you from what I'm sure is a very lovely nap. I've barely slept. Again, I apologize for that. We have um, folks from all the groups around and at the very least, we kind of need your... um input on the installation of a comm system that'll allow everyone to communicate communicate with everyone. That sounds great. Just do it. All right, then. Thank you. I'll <laughs> let you get back to your sleeping. Thank you. All right, Ed. Still, we'll go back. Goddamn luck when it comes to his sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably had people bugging him like every five minutes. Actually, on your way out, Tempered Steel, you find another pony heading towards his door. <laughs> <coughs> 
Steel will um stay there a moment and listen in. Hey, uh, hey, 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 Mayor Chase, go away! Oh, okay. And he just kind of walks off dejectedly. Okay, yes, and then Steel will head back. All right. So once you deliver the news of his approval, the uh, a couple of the Steel Rangers and Changelings break away yeah. to go to the command his, room and install his, the uplinks. His presumed approval. <laughs> they trust you on this. One yes, Steel Steel says he is willing to take the blame for if um, Steel objects to it later. Chase objects to it. If, if Steel. Tempered Steel will take the blame. Blaming of... ownership of Skyfall. <laughs> if Tempered Steel objects to it. <laughs> no, no. Um, if if um, Chase, <laughs> if Chase objects to it, and it turns out he just yeah, said, but it's it's like you just like you made yourself the mayor for a second. <laughs> <laughs> turns out, guys, he he made me the new mayor. So, uh, <laughs> new rule: no more drugs. They all have to go away now. <laughs> And then suddenly mutiny. <laughs> and Zenkarn says, who died and made you mayor? Sure, I'd put it that politely. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically nobody died. Uh, why do I even need but... you guys? I'll just make all your lines myself. I know you that well already. Who died and made you mayor? And why can't I revive them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't revive him because he's not dead. Don't worry, we can fix that problem. <laughs> <laughs> that problem, quote unquote. All right. So it seems to be generally agreed that we need to first figure out what the Dragonstone does, and then it's, determine it's a our question, plan it's from a, there. It's a question that remains to be answered, but really, the, right what, what the, the the agreement among the uh, the planners in the room with you is that. Uh, you need to reach the Dragonstone and activate it first, without dying. Well, our first stage right at the moment is contacting Ormar. Alright, and it'll take a little while to set that up. So, assuming we do need to reach the Dragonstone, what exactly is the plan there? Aerial, in aerial insertion. Well, yes, obviously, but... Stab the things we don't like and don't die, which is basically our normal plan. Um, probably, you know, thinking about it, it'd probably be best to, um, talk to War and the Steel Rangers and get their input on it, since, you know, this is a military operation, which is the kind of thing they are, um, they are experts at. Which is also what the communication uplink is for. So, yeah, let's, um, let's... What's the... Let's, let's get the thing installed and then use the thing to plan the thing. Um, real fast, did we talk, did they talk about what the security around the Dragonstone is? Like, specifically? Uh, it seems to be sort of a elite guard. About, about, uh, half a dozen ponies and hybrids. Hmm. Like, mm. half a dozen total? Well, a little more than that, but yeah. Wow, but that's... They're, but they're all heavily armed and armored. Yeah, but that's, number-wise, we can overwhelm that easily. But uh, since the Red Skull Cathedral isn't too far away, as soon as you if you if you just manage to just land there and take the, that squad out, then there'd be reinforcements within minutes. Right. We only need minutes. Well, then good. Then I guess uh, we have part of a plan right there. Yeah. I mean, assuming. Wait assuming... a minute. If the if the Dragonstone can be activated just by like you know someone hitting it, it why also, don't it... we just land the ship on it? it... <laughs> It takes a bit more than just that. <laughs> there's a certain. There's also well, a man, amount of channeling magic involved. I mm. mean, how well, long I mean, would it all, take all it to activate? Act all it did to activate the first one was tempered steel. Hit it a lot. Not the later ones, though. I have the, and I there's the fact that didn't we just stare at the later ones and just like ask them politely? I, if you don't mind terribly, would you would you turn on for I us? Don't, it hasn't uh, taken a whole lot, but it's taken something. Huh. And you know, somehow this, I don't... this is a uh, stone in the uh, voodoo cur curse, which means channeling magic might have a bad effects. See, I... So walk in, reason... channel as much necromancy as I can, and see what happens, Kender. <laughs> see, I don't... I mean, I think my mind's blanking, because I don't remember the other dragon stones. They haven't been exactly memorable events, no. Hmm. 
all that comes to mind for me is the uh, like point six dr- uh, draconic that tempered steel learns every time. <laughs> well, technically, he he. Yeah, I mean, technically, he now, he's, he now is. Uh, he has he has a passing passing literacy of dragon language. He's he, mm-hmm. he now is equivalent to a fourth grade dragon. <laughs> I can read dragon on a fourth grade level. <laughs> the books are crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, for for a minotaur, that's not that bad. No, oh, most minotaurs can't even read minotaur on a fourth grade level. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! It gets the med bay for that burn. <laughs> Yikes! That was some casual ass racism. Whoa. Well, I mean, if you were born and lived in a maze, <laughs> <laughs> there's not exactly a hell of a lot of reading to do. No, not exactly. Oh, I guess we can. So, I guess we can assume that uh, it will be a bit tricky to activate the dragon stone, but it won't take that long. Okay. <laughs> So, I guess now, right now, we're just we just need to wait for the communication arrays. All right. About uh, forty-five minutes later, now we're starting to get pretty pretty well into the night. Now, uh, the a couple of uh, soldiers, the Steel Ranger and the Changeling, come back from the command room and say, "All right, the uplinks are operational. The command room is starting to get uh, data from both Slayer Base and from Stable Nine Nine Eight. Sweet." So I guess now, now monitor and uh, and uh, Ormar can now send data and communicate with this ship. Can they communicate with each other? And with e- and with each other, we've got we've got a small we've got our own network now. <laughs> we we've got like a, a miniature s- Skype network. <laughs> <laughs> and you go to the, com- the to the command center, and there are these. There's this like blue screen with these portraits that light up whenever someone speaks. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing a... We're, we've got a... <laughs> <laughs> so who Program. wants who wants to start a tabletop game? <laughs> <laughs> Things are getting meta! <laughs> Program name, Skype Fall. So yes, in, in essence, you have created a proto-internet. <laughs> We are playing a Skype game that has a Skype conversation. This is indeed part of the session. <laughs> <laughs> and, now you, <laughs> and now you role play session zero of Fall is Dragons, and we just go around in a loop forever, and that's how it ends. <laughs> yes, we use we use the Skype conversation in the Skype conversation. <laughs> we use it to play out everything, but since we have to know exactly how these next couple of events are going to go, we have to start at the beginning. <laughs> And it will wind up creating a Skype conversation inside a Skype conversation inside a Skype conversation. Yeah, that's for uh, Default for actually uh, makes sure to program in some uh, redundancy checks to <laughs> prevent any of that. Anti- <laughs> anti-recursion God. feature is good. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, we'll just say you managed to do that, even though it doesn't matter. <laughs> Then the executive sends the first troll message <laughs> on the internet. He, he would specifically stop being such drama queens. Yeah. <laughs> oh god! And then he follows that. And then he replies. Then he hey. follows that up by sending the very first Rick roll. But uh, but, but Rick Astley doesn't exist. <laughs> There's got to be a pony equivalent. Well, I mean. To be fair, it's probably Rick Astley. There's another Zencarn email. Yep. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, let's get in contact with Ormar. Alright. You, uh... You see a portrait with a couple of draconic eyes. And, uh... He doesn't have a voice, but text appears on the screen when he when he wants to communicate with you. And he says, I see you, Maulers. Hello. Uh, we see you too. Well, we see a digital representation of you. The details. Let's, let's get these uh, pleasantries out of the way and just move right on to it. How do we? How exactly do we activate the dragon stone? And does it lead to the dragon, or does it lead to the dragon so-called lair? Interesting question. I'll confess, I do not know exactly, but I can make my best guess. It was Astaroth who set them up. 
and for each of us, each of us, they were individual. So, for some, they would be rather easy to activate, so as to draw in, to draw in, uh, well, lambs for the lambs for the slaughter, as it were. And then others would require more magical finesse for for Vasuki and her curse. You see, the dragon stones, they are not designed to necessarily point the way. That is a function you ponies kind of draw out of them to illuminate the path on which the, the magic travels to be absorbed by us, the Draco Liches. The dragon stones functionally, they channel the the curses and the auras that draw life energy away and towards us. Into the dragons specifically? Yes, we would be, we were, well, yes, to us, to our lich forms, our golem forms, and then from us into into some other container that Astaroth manages. That makes it sound like it would point me towards the dra Draco Lich itself. Then I would assume that is where the... Well, in some cases you could set up additional relays so that it points towards some entrance rather than directly through the ground at the dragon. This... And what would happen to the dragon if the dragon stone was destroyed? Dragon stones are the material that the dragon st the dragon stones are made of are some some of the strongest material the dragons have, and it is they are most definitely enchanted. It would be can they be moved? A funny story. I was thinking the same. Qu <laughs> I I had the same idea. Mm -hmm. Not without a great deal of energy and force. Fantastic. We have an airship. Even beyond that. Really? They were... If you'll recall, when this plan was set up, it was in the wake of having been bombed to near extinction. Everything that was built after that was designed built. to withstand that kind of force. What little we could build, which which boils down to the dragon stones in our lairs. So it's pretty much rooted to the ground. Yes, the the dragon stones extend far deeper into into the earth than they appear. Ah, you would have to extract them, even if it's possible, before you could even think of moving them, and it would be an incredible undertaking, like moving moving a hill. And if the uh, dragon stones' connection to their Matching dragon were to be severed. Well, you've destroyed some of us, but they still channel Astaroth's final curse. Ah. Hmm. Although I suppose what would happen after all the re the rest of the dragons are eliminated, I suppose the dragon stones would become inert. Hmm. Any other practical potential information about these things that we should know? Or perhaps anything about Vasuki? Vasuki prides her cleverness. Well then, her, that should be her, fun. Her intelligence and her mastery of magic, she lords over others. And it is not without merit, this pride. Javon gets a little grin on his face. I think I can talk to her. Just, Aurelia grits her teeth and says, just like you thought you could talk to just about everyone we've ever met. And it's worked sometimes. Eh, about a 30-70 chance. <laughs> That's the percentage on your speech check. Uh, Javolt actually has a pretty high persuasion goal. He has a persuasion of nine, so... Yeah, and how many times have I actually made you roll that? I don't know. I, I tend to make role-playing the more important factor here. Mm. You know, like actually being persuasive. <laughs> <sighs> God, ponytails is old. <laughs> yep. No, oh, it's been it's been two years since we started this game. Sure has. That was that was like on its way out even then. No, it was. It's not that it was on its way out. It was that it got it had gone through some very big overhauls and revisions, and we decided to stay with the first edition. Yeah. Well, the edition we're playing with, that I'm referring to. Yeah. 
It feels like playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons when 5e has just come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what it feels like. Um, there you go. Um, Tibbs is going to uh, just sort of look at the others, look back to the screen and go, Well, thank you for the information, Omar. I think uh, we'll, I mean, we'll be in touch if we need anything else. Of course, I will be relaying information from the Southern Front as well. Good, good. And um, it's going to turn to the others and... So the this Dragonstone, what's the closest like of our occupational zones that it's nearest? The Dragonstone is basically like the dead center. Well, actually, um, no, it's 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 closer to the western front than. But there's not really hmm. there's not really a front there. It's. But I mean, like Steel Rangers, Ribcage, uh, Apocalypse, etc. Which which of those is closest? Since the most of the Steel Rangers are still. Just barely starting to mobilize in Slayer Base, I guess the cult, the uh, four horses would be closer. Okay, but they're being held up by a defensive line from the, by, well, by battle lines drawn with the, uh, with the cult. Right, right. Um, Zenkarn, you feel like you want some rage. <laughs> that... <laughs> I take another swig because I can't. Well. No, you're right. Is Firelight still at the thing? Firelight. Or is he here? Firelight's, Firelight's kind of checking in, but... Uh, eventually... There are also some X-Raiders in the base. Just pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to do the smart thing, talk to Firelight first, and then I'll go buy it off the buy it off the Raiders. Firelight's basically like traveling between the med bay and the conference room, basically just checking in and then going back to working on his patience. His several... Uh, high priority patients. The... Actually, because this is precisely what Tibbs would do. Um, whatever. Uh, if like if there are uh, you know, if there is a like a brief moment where he can talk to the raiders and or ex raiders and somewhat private, um, he's going to ask if they have any rage and if so, what they would like to trade for it. <laughs> uh, one of the pestilence uh, pummies, uh, says he has uh one dose of rage to spare and if you have uh medics that would be ex incredibly helpful excellent i have i do in fact have a thing of medics and so we'll do a swap of that all right you now have a dose of rage okay um <clears throat> zenkarn your attempts to uh we'll just say your attempts to wheedle any rage out of firelight no matter even if he has some or knows where some is or inevitably fruitless. Aw, Firelight is mean. Firelight's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Firelight's quite aware of how uh, deep your need goes yet, but uh, he's definitely wary. Especially around you and drugs. Because you... Fire, we've, we've, you've, 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 you've had several discussions about drugs, which are kind of worrying. Even before you were addicted. What? No, I wouldn't do that. That's silly. Firelight is a sane and wise unicorn who knows what he's doing. Except when it comes to fire. Then he's like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. We haven't had enough <laughs> Tibbs being a bad influence on Firelight. You say that like it's a bad thing. Not recently, at any rate. Not recently. Anyway. Uh, Tibbs, do you say anything when Zenkarn returns? Uh... Just going to give him a little nod and uh, a point to his uh, his bags. Um, I'll nod back and then like sort of gesture to the door. And uh, Tibbs will take a moment to head out for a little bit. Is this while the conversation is going on or when is this happening? This is while everyone's talking in the conference room, planning. Yep. So it's in full view of everyone as they coordinate and walk out together. Yes, because you know me and Tibbs hanging out is such an un is such a rare thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Tibbs will uh after uh after they both head out, Tibbs will look at Zenkarn and go, "I managed to swipe a swipe the last container they had a rage off of uh some old friends of mine. So, how much are you willing to pay for it? How much do I have?" 
Good <laughs> question. <laughs> um, All of my money. Shut up and take it. A uh, hundred. Hundred. Mm, it's usually less than I ask for, but uh, what the hey, we'll call it a friendly discount. I like that plan. That's a good plan. <laughs> I can't um, start to wonder how long is it going to be until this this um, make Zen card go broke. It depends when we get, <laughs> depends how long it takes me to start shifting things from the horde and converting it to caps. I mean, um, uh, after Tibbs gets the caps and hands over the rage, he is going to have her look Zen card in the anger. Just uh, much as I like this sort of uh, arrangement we've come to, don't be too keen to take these. You understand? Don't need you to. Don't need to uh, put you down before we even get into a real fight. Nah, I wouldn't do that. Only for emergencies, you know me. Tibbs gives Zed Karn a really deadpan. Like, are you trying to shit me? Look. <laughs> hey, the last time I took drugs, it was an emergency. So, in fact, every time I've taken drugs, it's been an emergency. So, not lying. <laughs> not lying, but you know. Tibbs is a seller. He knows how this works. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. He's made an empire out of people out of who this. just took it in emergencies. Yeah. Tibbs and his empire of unfortunate souls. <laughs> oh, unfortunate souls. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's going to be my response. Just, yeah. As I said, um, emergencies. Apparently Tibbs there's is, this, there's this long awkward moment between the two of you as he just kind of stares you down. Tibbs is also going to say, uh, "I also happen to know that uh, the first time you take it, it's the best. So uh, if you ever feel like you need to clean it out, just get back in touch." I doubt it's ever going to get that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is someone eating or messing with something on their table? Oh, no, the, the cat was pushing some stuff around. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, sleep and on after that, day. Tibbs is going to head back into the conference room. I, I can't help but be amused at the change in Zenkarn's avat- in Kulis's avatar. Happy <laughs> <laughs> you too sad. Oh, wait, hang what, on. I've you got my don't drugs believe now. me? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! I have my drugs now. I have my drugs back. Back to the happy avatar. <laughs> um. <laughs> wow, yes, I am going to abuse this privilege as much as I can. Um. So when you said I really want, I like, I re- I felt the need. How badly are we talking here? Um, not too badly, just. You just as severe as I made it sound, which was not that much, if I recall. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm probably not going to get any more for a little bit at the very least. So eh, half yeah. doses on the things and gone. Right. Um, just yeah, it, just stick it into the saddle bag and just ignore it. I I have to ask: Do you have an angry Zenkarn head for when you take your rage? I yes. do not. <laughs> Give me a sec. <coughs> I don't know. I think it would look too dissimilar. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it would just be like the eyes are like half done, like half closed, like kind of angled. Uh, mouth still open. And it's just like, ah! <laughs> anyway, the podcast people aren't going to know what we're talking about. So let's, uh, <laughs> right, let's right. not dwell on this too much. I don't know. You could make it the image for the episode. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Just follow his dragons and then that face. <laughs> that emo- emote. No. No, that that would imply work, though. No. And During the relevant conversation. And and I, the iTunes people wouldn't know what we're talking about. It's it's this sort of emote Zenkarn face that we're talking about with big, beady red eyes. and, and It'll be on the Tumblr. I promise. It'll be on the Tumblr. Yeah, it'll definitely get on the Tumblr. Fidpodcast.tumblr.com. It was the yeah, first time we actually mentioned that in the podcast. Because I'm the worst at advertising things, even necessary things. Anyway, eh, no worries. I'll I'll wait for a couple of minutes for um for Tibbs to go back in, uh, to, for Tibbs to be inside before so, I go uh, back. While they've been having this drug conversation, I'm guessing that the uh, group 
conversation has devolved into something completely random. Why would you no, no, they're just kind of dealing with strategies uh, and true placements. Now that mm. now that the comm link's up, now they're uh, coordinating forces on either side and coming up with uh, battle plans for the next uh, 48, 48 hours. The kind so, of it's thing, actually, so, it's, so it's actually quite boring. So the kind of thing, though, that'll help us get close, help us get to the stone? No, more like what needs to be done to keep Ribcage safe and what needs to be done to advance from Gold Rush. Stuff that is kind of very far from where you are going to be operating. You're going to be your own cell. Are we, we're going to be using the airship, though, right? How, Probably not. How, how would you be using the airship? We shoot bombs at everything. I until no, we I mean win. airship. I mean, using the airship to get us to the stone. Yes, and then probably either the lift that Javolt and Raven made, or one of the uh, Pegasus transport carts that the Enclave gave you. But other than we could that, just jump, <laughs> or just jump, and hopefully gravity is not a thing anymore. Are we? Are we? <laughs> are we going to need any support for any air forces or? Does Skyfall still have Bombay doors? It does. We could just bomb Red Scale Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like those bombs in the lower bay disappeared. No, you just disarmed the big connecting trigger. Well, aren't those like nukes or what kind of bombs are those? Those are those are tactical warheads. They're not necessarily nukes. In, in which case, bombing... Bombing Red Scale Cathedral does not sound like the worst possible idea we could go with. Aurelia puts a hand up and says, <laughs> um, but potential innocence and also potential, like, brother dragon egg, something like that. Eh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Tibbs <laughs> is going to, you know, being Tibbs, he's going to look at the rest of the group, look at Aurelia. Go. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you care about this mystery, brother? Um, not that much, because when I th imagine having to figure out how to repopulate dragons, that sends a sh really bad shiver down the back of my neck, but, uh, you know, it would be nice not to be alone after this is all said and done. Well, we could send out a message saying, well, could we... We don't really want to send we out just, a message. We just if bomb around them. Eh, with the size of those things, it's not really going to be a thing where we can do that easily. Actually, uh, one of the Steel Rangers uh, speaks up and says, "If we're if we're talking about tactical bombing, and if it's even possible with the Gunsmith's Curse in play, it would be far better suited to for tactical bombings of uh, around the war zone rather than to support our troops, rather than immediately going for the cathedral when we can't even capture it." Fair point. That's, that's a right. that's a fair point. Um, the right. Enclave um, got out of the gun curse range by going vertical, didn't they? No, no, they were horizontal. You were still way up vertical, but they, but you guys were still in the curse zone. That took them by surprise. Right, but I thought when we went back to their ship, on their ship, the Gunsmith's curse was not in effect. I didn't realize they were that far out. They were that hmm. far out. Yeah, that is that is why. Steel was not able to fly over there. Yeah. I did not realize that. Um, they they weren't right next to you. They were able to stay a safe distance away because they were all Pegasi and could fly over themselves. Fair enough. Um, and also keep their guns on you at range in case you would somehow manage to reactivate yours. Mm, fair enough. Um, but yeah, that sounds like, I mean, drop bombs on certain areas of the line that they want to break through. Yeah. I mean, hell, breaking uh, breaking open the entire line that the, uh, you know, the apocalypse is dealing with would be pretty decisive in a lot of ways. You know, even even if the gunsmith Kirk, I mean, even if the gunsmith curse is in effect, I mean, even the idea of having heavy items dropped <laughs> on them from above is going to have an impact. And if worse comes to worse, <laughs> impact. I see what you just did. And then and then he just drops from the call. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I mean, if worst comes to... Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can yep. hear you again. Yeah, if worst comes to worst, we can load a bunch of rocks and drop them on the enemy, and then rocks fall, raiders die. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. 
<laughs> well, back to back to what uh, Tibbs was saying, I guess. Like, do we really care all that much about whoever's in the cathedral? Like, really? Because I'm kind of with him on the whole blowing it the shit up thing. Amber's in the cathedral. Yeah. Yeah. Not every, not every pony in there is going to be in, in the, the in wall. In, collateral damage. In, it happens. In fact, the cathedral's the most likely place to hold the most non-combatants. Mm-hmm. We're probably better off deciding where we want forces to break through, bombing around that site and creating a puncture zone for the friendly forces to get to the cathedral. And maybe bombing around the cathedral to take out any defenses. Of course, once uh, once we start bringing in air support, they're going to target the ship very directly, so we'll need to probably get more troops here to defend the ship. Because they may, they may come after us hard with hybrids. You mean Pegasus forces? Well, <laughs> pardon me. They will probably have more hybrids than Pegasi in the cult. At this point. Mm. So they have access to guns and we don't. Yay. Yeah. Um, we also have access to an airship and they don't. <laughs> and high grade military weaponry. Sure, but they've got distance on their side, which is the problem. Like, yeah, this is going to come, like the whole ship thing's going to come out of the left field. But once that surprise sort of turns down, snipers, snipers everywhere. Do, um. Do we, do we know how, um, I mean, does the gunsmith curse affect things like crossbows? I mean, I know it's a minor thing. And it Cross, have crossbows tr- have triggers. Regular bows do not. Regular bows also significantly harder for ponies to use. Yes. <laughs> Regular bows barely even exist in this world. Um, okay. Uh, so basically what I'm getting at is we need to at the very least, come up with some sort of guerrilla strike force or whatever. Someone that can get in, activate the Dragonstone as quickly as physically possible and get out uh, before reinforcements arrive. Possibly just incapacitating rather than killing, if that would be faster. Murder is always faster. <laughs> um, that said, we do have a few diamond dogs who can suddenly turn invisible. That would probably be helpful. Well, one of the, the invisible one is currently recovering from a near-fatal sword wound. That can be transferred, right? It's just a stealth boy. Yeah. So you or could stealth fuck. Yeah. For a minute there, I thought you were talking about the wound. <laughs> yeah, the same. <laughs> same. We, can move, we can move the wound. Just have someone else deal with that wound for a while. <laughs> just one of those things I could see Tips doing, being like, heal you slash someone, else, someone else's spot. Oh, there yeah. you go. Patient ratio is the same. Let's go. <laughs> Um. So yeah, the, hell, the uh, hellhounds can probably be counted on for support down there. Mm-hmm. Um. God. At this point, we just kind of need to get over there and see what kind of get get someone who can at least you know examine the scene without too much, uh, or examine the security without too much, uh, without a chance of being spotted well, and have, get out. You do have access to a pretty good scout. Yeah. Um. So the amount of stuff we can talk about at this point is kind of limited without actually doing anything more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've you just about planned out as much as you can. Although now the B team asks, well, that's your mission. What will be ours? That's what that's li- not Lily Pad's dying. <laughs> For the moment, I imagine I imagine support. Uh, um, I mean, especially if we wind up going into the cave, we might need someone to stay at the entrance at some point where we where snipers are going to have, but as a force to be able to keep them back. Us against an entire army, really. It's just a sign of how much we trust you. <laughs> Tips is going to say with a clearly sarcastic grin. You know, um, admittedly, that did sound better when I thought it out before I said it. Well, we do um, have... As a, as a sort of general thing, between uh, us and the Beat team. How many non unicorn or how many Earth ponies are there? Um, Earth ponies or non unicorn, non pegasi? Um, goodness. I mean, <clears throat> the only non unicorn, non pegasus, uh, in the B team is 
I'm pretty sure that's just 10 paces. Okay, so we're not going to want them in the curse zone, just as a general thing. I'm sorry, what? Just be, like, the since their team mostly consists of unicorns and pegasi who have, you know, more uh, inherent okay. magic stuff going on, we're probably going to want to send them outside of the curse zone. Yeah, two unicorns, two pegasi, three, how about three? Yeah, when you pin it like that. Three, three unicorns, two pegasi, and a minotaur. Mm-hmm. When you put it like that way, it almost sounds bad for the raider for the maulers to go in. Uh, the maulers, admittedly, yes, it's bad for the maulers as well. But I, we have enough. Like the majority of the weapons can be used without magic. Um, the the one that it's going to harm the most is Zenkarn, if we're being perfectly honest. Zenkarn Yay. and Firelight. Yeah. And we, shall, you, we shall see how the how the cookie crumbles when you get there. Da, da, da. Really? Yeah, it turns really? Out, I don't know. It just that's there. I just blinked, and that was the it's only. A fr- it's a phrase. I mean, yes, he's used it for a character, but it's still a phrase. Hey, I'm pretty sure you guys named that character. <laughs> I refuse to take blame for this. I was not there. I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was your fault. <laughs> um. Right, well, uh, so at this point, what we need to do is we're so we're going to try and activate the Dragonstone, try to find Vasuki. Uh, Apocalypse is dealing with their whole like the battle lines effectively. Ranger or not Ranger base Slayer base is mobilizing. Um, nine nine eight is sort of acting as a central intelligence hub. Um, so what is B team? And Red Scale Cathedral is in the Voodoo Curse Zone, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, honestly, at this point, I feel like, uh, as a personal thing, out of character, I feel like B-Team would probably be best suited acting as a secondary defense force for Skyfall. Because it's going to, you know, need extra protection once it officially gets going into the war. That's actually pretty good. Pretty good plan right there. <sighs> Lilypad sighs and says... They're not going to like that after everything we've been through, but you're probably right. It's, uh, okay, I got in character, um, Tiddles got, yeah, it's not exactly the best job, but once things have, you know, once that voodoo curse is gone and things are sort of more equalized on the front, uh, you all, you lot could very well be used to infiltrate Red Scale Cathedral or take out key, po- key, excuse me, key positions, uh, et cetera. Not necessarily staying here, but just for the moment. That seems to be the only thing I can think of. Best use of your talents. Yes. We will We will probably see no lack of combat, even if we're in the air. As soon as uh, the executive gets the bright idea to try and infiltrate like the Enclave. All right, so it's it's late at night at this point, right? Yeah, it's, you're, you're, it's kind of well into the night. And my, even most of the buffet food has been... Uh, just take it eaten up by now. All right, so I'm going to go see if I can make any uh, headway with the Diamond Dogs as far as, uh, you know, potentially using them to help uh, get that stone activated as quickly as possible without triggering too many reinforcements. And uh, then I'm going to get some Shut-Eye. Steel is going to go with the talk with the Diamond Dogs. Uh, Before Tids heads out, though, he's going to say, anything else? Or can I assume we're going to start this uh, train wreck tomorrow? First thing in the morning. Possibly possibly before sunrise. Uh, that's what I figured. Alright. So, yeah. Tibbs will head out and head over to the Hellhounds. Still will go with him. Alright. Just to make sure maybe the pony doesn't get eaten. <laughs> just just a, you know, casual thing. Well, I suppose that could be a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Not the reason I'm actually going, but it's a, it could be a reason. Well, I mean... Given Tibbs' attitude, probably a, probably a good idea. He's probably not going to make friends. Tibbs does not make friends. He makes customers. Make customers or uh, or workers. Sometimes acquaintances. Sometimes acquaintances, if you're lucky. And if you're not, enemies. <laughs> well, if you're not, you're probably dead. <laughs> probably. Anywho, um, uh, do you want us to? Uh, our role play this out, or 
is this one of those things where it can be sort of just generally not an issue? Um, we can definitely role play this out. Although while you're in transit, something else happens. Oh God! <laughs> Explosions. Uh, the only explosion that happens is in the form of Summer Snow's voice that shouts out, "Flotsam!" <laughs> I didn't do anything this time. She, she pokes her head into the room. Flotsam, out here, please. Um. <laughs> June tried to ask Flotsam. her out, didn't he? <laughs> Sorry. Flotsam flutters over. And she just kind of takes you out into the hall and says, uh, I just got, like, a bouquet of flowers and a really saccharine card with them, apparently addressed from Jin. Poor bastard. That doesn't sound like something Jin would... Oh, no. Are, are you sure? Because this is getting a little... This is a little much. May I see the card? By, by all means, get it out of my sight. And, uh... <laughs> You attempts have been made to disguise it, but you can kind of recognize uh Vermillion's flowery handwriting and language. Oh goodness, this is this is some of the most purple poetic prose you've seen in a while. <laughs> Comparing your your big sister to sunsets and uh <laughs> scorched meadows and <laughs> Is more and more this? sunsets. I don't know. <laughs> please, clouds. Please, t- please tell me that somewhere on this card are two little, like you know, cartoonish figures of summer snow and gin, and you can pull like tabs on the side to make them come together and kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Why the hell not? <laughs> Why the hell not? <laughs> it's it's a. Lawson actually it's gets a, this kind of dreamy romantic look in her eye and goes. Aww. I mean, no, 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 not aw, not aw. Sorry, this she is... puts the card down. I I have to see a love cat about a, whatever this is. Are are you trying to set me up with the changeling? Me? No, apparently Vermilion is. I don't know why. I don't know where he could have got that. I. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know what? You better not talk to Vermilion because I, I, I don't want. I would like him to keep alive. So Lots I'm up. gonna go talk. What? You hear? You you see Jin storming up to you. <laughs> no, it was the cat. <laughs> he's holding. He's holding a box partly open that seems to contain a freshly pressed suit. <laughs> doesn't even make sense. You can make your own clothes. You're a changeling. Where did you even get a suit? That's what I want to know. Okay, you guys stay here. I need to go talk to Vermilion because I think he's overstepping stepping some bounds here. <laughs> oh, oh, he's been talking to Jabal. No. <laughs> and uh, I guess has Javon is Javon even aware of this situation? Uh, from the shouting, you can kind of guess what's going on. And uh, Javolt is already talking to Vermilion. Uh, Vermilion learn- Vermilion's not in this room with you guys. Dang it. Vermilion's off in some well, other part of the ship. Point. Okay, Javolt uh, walks up to the pair and says, I'm terribly sorry. I assume I'm terribly sorry that uh, Vermilion has not learned anything about subtlety. I assumed he would have. Having- they both glare at you. Flotsam um, stops on her quest to get Vermilion, doubles back, flies over to Javolt, flies directly in front of him, looks him in the goggles and says, Vermilion doesn't know anything about subtlety? Well, yes. Hot kettle. What, do you think I would honestly force them together? Follow me, donkey. And she just tries to drag him off with her. Uh, he, he just stands there, letting her grab his ear. Oy vey. Yeah, she's gonna find Vermilion with Javolt in tow. Javolt, you find yourself dragged along by Flotsam's sheer force of will. <laughs> and you probably want to find the cat, too. Yes, well, you should at least look over the gifts before you throw them away. Why do I need a suit? 
Where did he get a suit in the wasteland? That's why you should look them over. Javelt, stop helping. Why should I? Split. <laughs> Uh, as soon as they turn a corner and uh, the couple are out of sight, he starts walking with her and says, In all seriousness, I did not plan for this. And but you did tell Vermillion about Jin's crush. Yes, I... You told something that's a species called Love Cat about someone's crush... Someone who specializes in making cards for everything. Flotsam, I'm old. That's I'm old. no excuse! The sudden really? backstory of Javolt's shipping phase. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what, I you look... You know, I'm, I'm honest, Flotsam, I'm old, and I'm going to be basically fighting dragons during the next few weeks. Do you honestly... <sighs> I just want to make sure that, just in case, I just want to make sure there is a potential for a life that everyone I know has potential for a life without me. Duval, that's the kind of thing that's best left for people to figure out by themselves. Even I know that, and I'm 11. Yeah, and, and, and that uh, that is why I was not going to push them together. I, I, I mean, I do think they would be good for each other, but I was not going to force them together. I assumed I was on the same page with Vermilion, but... <sighs> and that's why we're going to go talk to him now. Hmm. On the upside, the suit was actually rather well-crafted. Where the heck did he get a suit in the wasteland? <laughs> if I had to guess from the proportions... Can I roll knowledge to figure out what the suit, where the suit might have come from? Um, it sure. It came from the, All right. the love cat. That's where it came from. Okay, I got an 18. Uh, you actually recall that there was a vendor for pre-war outfits somewhere. It might have actually been back in Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. I remember that guy. But that doesn't... It would have taken him entirely far too long for him to have made the order and gotten it s tailored today. So, it's, st Cat. it's still a mystery. Love cats work in mysterious ways. Since he's a time traveler, can he tell us how the war's gonna end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Javolt, uh, Javolt uh, actually raises his brows and says, I think he might actually have a functional time rocket. <laughs> Lots of opens her mouth, closes it. Opens it again and then goes. Actually, yeah, that makes about as much sense as anything else. <laughs> you know what? I'm suddenly looking forward to when someone mentions around Vermilion the whole thing that may or may not be going on between Plotsam and Smack Talk. No. <laughs> yeah, Devolt's not going to talk about that in front of yep. Plotsam. Vermilion. You find uh, Vermilion in one of the rooms back in Blinky's shop. You're eventually pointed in that direction. And when you enter the room, he's holed up and you find it plastered wall to wall with, uh, let's just say, plans. <laughs> Timelines, schedules, gifts to be delivered when and where. Okay. Also has a look of... It can best be described as a perfect mix between bemusement and horror. <laughs> uh, Javolt is going to examine the plans, and uh, he says, Okay. First of all, you have far too little flexibility in your plans. He, he doesn't quite know how to take that. He's like, but, but, but... Secondly, you are actually not taking in much of their individual cultures and personalities. I mean, seriously, I get this. This is a this is a Griffin tradition right here. His his adorable little smile starts to falter. And thirdly, love must not be pushed by others. They have to find it themselves. By now he's he's starting to realize he's getting scolded and 
his his face droops. Not saying that these aren't bad ideas, just that you should know when to apply them. And that basically that when is when they say to apply them. Mm-hmm. And also I would be a and also hmm. Tears start welling up in his eyes. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Rock. He's not allowed to do that. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to make you roll saves against his <laughs> overwhelming, heart-wrenching adorableness. Uh, Vermillion. Oh, God. Um, listen. What if, instead of working on making all these, um, getting snow and gin together cards and gifts. Maybe you make a card for each of them saying, I'm sorry I tried to force, um, I tried to push you into a romantic relationship you may or may not have been ready for yet. He sniffles and nods. You can uh, put lots of sparkles and smiley faces on it. That that brings up his spirits a little bit. And you could uh, also tell me where you got your time machine. His head cocked to Well, the I'm side. done with this conversation. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> His head cocks to the side. Anyway. <laughs> no, but seriously. He has no where idea. Where did you get the where did you get the suit? He he just kinda gives you a shrug. <clears throat> okay, so you're a species of random Um hmm. You didn't s- <clears throat> No, of course, you wouldn't steal things. Although you may not Hmm. Anyway. Let's uh let's cut away from that. <laughs> Vermilion continues to be best character. <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> and uh let's cut to uh let's cut to the Hellhounds with uh tempered steel and uh fractured tibia back in the uh med bay. Uh you see uh Bella uh recovering in one of the cots and uh uh Diesel kind of, his very large imposing form just kind of hunched over her watching her quietly. How are you holding up? <laughs> we'll take her what a while. The, what if I check the wound out again? The other doctor checked it plenty. Alright then. <clears throat> she needs rest now. And she can absolutely have that rest. But we may need to make use of your stealth bucks. They still work. Good, good. You're gonna kill? Well, yes, that's the uh, general idea. We've got some ponies or dragon hybrids or something that's guarding a dragon stone, and we need to get rid of them in a way that doesn't exactly attract the attention of the uh, nearby cathedral. So, Bella would be good at that. Indeed she would, but uh, we're not exactly going to send her out into the field in that position, so... Anyway, so either we can take the ste- stealth box, which I have a distinct feeling you wouldn't exactly like being used by anybody other than yourselves. Uh, so any chance we could borrow one of you for uh, a small slaughtering spree? Quite stoically, he gets up from the chair he's been almost crushing under his own weight, picks up his hammer, just kind of glares at you, snarling drool kind of spilling out from between his teeth and muttering just point us at the ponies who are going to die. Tib smiles and uh, says, don't worry, we absolutely will point you in the right direction but uh, we're not going to be doing it just right this second. So, you can... It's uh, coming soon though. Very soon. Good. Good indeed. That is definitely a sentiment I can get behind. Uh, Well, like I said, we've got this all established. Uh, I suppose I will come back when we are officially heading this out. Thank you for your cooperation, and uh, I look forward to watching your work. He does. His expression doesn't change. He, there's no joy or excitement or even a whole lot of anger. He just just sits back down and goes back to. Staring at Bella. You need a new chair, or is that good for you? Yeah. Okay, then. I'll, um... I'll leave it... I'll, uh... Tibbs is, uh... Going to... 
as he's heading out, he's going to uh, drop a stim pack next to the door, just as a little there, something to uh, maybe help out. <laughs> a health potion. Yeah, effectively. He doesn't move for it before you leave. Well, yeah, I wasn't expecting him to. Tibbs isn't even going to, like, you know, pay attention to it after he's dropped it. All right. With that, with plans basically set, and uh, now that there's a general idea of what you guys are going to do, is there any other remaining threads that you guys want to tug at before we call a night? No, I think, I mean, on my end, I'm good. Ready to start the war next time? Woo! At, at long last, after I've done everything in my power to delay it. <laughs> yeah, let's get this, as as Tib said, let's get this train wreck rolling. That's one of my favorite phrases. Uh-huh. All right. Then I guess it's time. This has been Fallout as Dragons. Join us next week when we go to war. For reals this time. For reals. Four reels. four reels. Real. Or maybe two reels. Two reels. I, I, as long as it's not reel to reel, I don't want to have to, like, switch mid-reels. 